Did you have any idea where you were? Obviously, on your way to the Sahara, in Mali, any idea? Well, we knew we were smack in the middle of the Sahara. Um, we were, they drove us about, uh, we were 1,100 kilometers north of, of Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. And if Timbuktu is a sort of symbol for the end of the world, right. we were 1,000 kilometers past that. Did it help you had Louis with you? Help or hinder I, I, you? Did it matter? I am not sure if I would have survived without Louis. Okay. And he says the same thing. Uh, we were, we were very, very fortunate indeed to have each other. The, the 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 desperation of the whole thing would have been multiplied tenfold if I'd had to do it alone. And in Camp Canada, there were rules, obviously. Mm, right. Uh, the small things, often the devils in the details, mm -hmm. as you know, mm -hmm. but they eat with their hands. Mm -hmm. You wanted to eat with a spoon the right. day you lost your spoon. It was a terrible, terrible thing. I mean, crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I recognized that, you know, there were, there were elements of obsessive behavior and I had obsessive loops going around in my head mm -hmm. about uh, one of them was, uh, um, you know, uh, they would tell us any one of a thousand things that we'd end with and therefore we've decided to freeze. Uh, and I would fill in you know, what came before that in, in a thousand different variations, and therefore we've decided to freeze. And finally, one day, that came. Mm -hmm. But the spoon, the spoon, um, they'd captured Westerners before, and I think they were not, therefore, that surprised by our fastidiousness. But when I lost the spoon, um, I kind of lost that last hold on my life. Mm. And I, uh, I'd looked I looked for it for hours, hours. And your clothes disintegrated after yeah. so many months. Yeah. Uh, did they make you wear turbans or head wraps or? It, they gave us a long piece of gray cotton material for turbans. Uh, we each had ball caps. We we're, we're both um, uh, follically challenged and, and, and therefore the ball caps were not of yes. great use. The turban is an extremely. And too Western, I'm sure. Yeah, but the turban is a very mm -hmm. efficient form of headgear for that kind of climate. Uh, three Omars. <laughs> what, they're real names? or Who, who knows? Who knows? The name, so you had Omar the name they gave us. And many of them, like us, have many names, but they all identified themselves as Omar. Could you pick out who was the kindest, who uh, might give you a break, who might say, let's not kill them? Yes. Um, now, we tried to do that. Um, and we kind of ran personality profiles on all 30 of them oh. all the time and kind of constantly adjusted. I mean, one of the silly things I did is I, I gave them all Canadian military ranks so that I could keep them apart, who was a corporal and who was a sergeant and who was a lieutenant and who was a major. Um, and every now and then I would promote or demote them according to what was going on. Um, none of them were nice um, in, our, in our context. Right. Uh, one, one guy had a particular af affection, I think, for Louis and, and, and was instrumental in, in limiting the damage uh, to Louis. But so. was it clear that if they were going to spare someone, you of the higher rank, they would spare you? For a while. For a while. In other words, uh, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, Fanny. If, I mean, we, we recognized from the beginning that if they decided at one point they needed to um, uh, speed up the negotiations, um, they might have a bit of a demonstration. And Louis, Louis would mm -hmm. be the first candidate, but, but I would be the second candidate. And when you watch the videos, and they did have uh, satellite phones and uh, GPSs yeah. and yeah. equipment, when, when you watch the videos of what was happening in the West, yeah. what was their reaction? What did you watch? Well, we mostly watched things they were doing to the West. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, these were um, Al-Qaeda central mo montages of all the glorious Al-Qaeda victories over Western infidels, defilers of Muslim lands. So they would be popping the heads off GIs in, in Afghanistan and Iraq. There would be IEDs blowing our soldiers up all over the place. There would be suicide bombers um, happily talking of the glory of paradise to come and then driving their trucks through fences and into buildings and blowing the hell out of the whole, whole thing. Mm -hmm. And every time one of these things would happen, the group of captors around me would scream, Allahu Akbar, God is great, and, um, and then try to 
catch our faces to see how we were enjoying yes. the show. Uh, and uh, the details are all in here about how you can go to the bathroom, where you can go to the bathroom, uh, who if, watches if you, you. If you're lucky enough to go to the bathroom. If you're lucky enough to go to the bathroom. <laughs> right. The food was basically initially dates and sardines. You're yes. not so fond of sardines. No. All of that. And I, I know it sounds light and trite to say mm -hmm. I don't like sardines, but in those circumstances with the water. Yeah. The water was awful. It have been all that pure. The water was awful. The quantity was not the problem. They made very clear that we could have what we needed to drink to drink, not for anything else. Um, uh, but, the, but they would put the water in, in these cans of um, uh, poison, uh, or had contained poison, and uh, it tasted awful. Yes, just did you awful. try to escape? No. Uh, I constantly had plans to escape. I figured, I figured that if I could evade the three guns on us at night, and Louis let me have the four liter can of water, I could probably walk 20 kilometers across the desert before sunrise, and that would leave only 980 to go. And uh, what did you learn about the alien mind of, of a, a terrorist, an Al-Qaeda operative? These guys What were, makes them tick? God. God. These are the most committed, focused individuals I've ever encountered anywhere. Mm. Um, the children, too. The children, the child too, soldiers. absolutely. The children too. They, they, um, they were not interested in what young men in Canada are interested in. They weren't interested in stuff. They were. Um, they didn't want cool sunglasses. They wanted to get to paradise as soon as possible. At one point, a guy stripped his AK off his shoulder, thrust it in my face vertically, and said, "Kill me now. I'm ready for paradise." Hmm. Um, and there's no, absolutely no doubt in my mind hmm. that he was serious. And when you were released, uh, your first day back. Well, the back a was pleasure of any sort. Well, my the shower. The shower um, in in the hotel in Bamako. We got in at three in the morning. I had five showers in a row, um, and there was still sand on the bottom of the shower stall after the fifth one. Um, but it was wonderful. Um, mm. The shower was absolutely wonderful, and then. The second, I guess, was my avocado and tomato salad that I had dreamt of. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we hadn't seen a vegetable or, or, or a fruit for 85 days in a row, and uh, it was very good to I'm to sure it was. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much more in a season in hell, mm -hmm. and what's going on there and here, mm -hmm. and congratulations on being a finalist in the Nonfiction thank Award, you. and congratulations thank on you. surviving this, and thank you for your public service. Thank you. And your foreign service and all of that service. Thank you. And lots more to talk about, so come back. Thank you, Fanny. With okay. pleasure. Nice to meet you.